Hi, I'm Mark Kenyon with Garage Gurus. And on today's tech tip, I want to talk about how to get some scope patterns uh, off this 2019 uh, Chevy Equinox. I get a lot of technicians when they come to the training I do and they see scope patterns and let's say I'm scoping a cam sensor or crank sensor or maybe an IC signal off an ignition coil, whatever it might be, the, the typical question I get is, Mark, how did you get that pattern and how did you know where to connect and you know, how did you set the scope up? And uh, what I want to do is address some of those uh, questions today. We're not going to get into any serious in-depth uh, diagnostics. I just want to show you how to get these patterns, which sensors to hook into, and maybe just a few pointers on how to get these, uh, uh, this diagnostic you know, a little easier, so to speak. So with all that being said, let's go over to the car and let me show you our hookups. Okay, we're on the car now, and before we get too far into this, what I'd like to do is kind of, let's talk about our equipment for a second, and uh, then we'll kind of get into our connections. So we're using a four-channel Pico scope. Uh, any four-channel scope will do the patterns that we're talking about today. Uh, the thing I like about the Pico is, works well with our equipment for recording, so it gives us a nice visual uh, on these programs when we do them. So we've got multicolored leads, which gives us the ability to kind of separate our channels, especially when we're looking at a visual like we see under the hood here, where we've got multiple sensors connected. Sometimes it get a little confusing if you don't have that color to help you differentiate. And you'll see these colors will actually line up to the colors of the traces on the scope itself. So what I'd like to show you now is kind of where we went to get the connections. These are the questions I get, as I said earlier. Crank signal can be gotten a couple different spots. This car, uh, where that sensor's at, kind of difficult to get to. PCM sits right here, not near as difficult. Really all I had to do is pop it out of the bracket, lay it down, pop this little plastic piece off and then find the wire using my wiring diagram. Wiring diagrams are gonna be critical for this kind of work. Once I found it and was able to back probe it, now I can get the crank signal. Next signal I wanna talk about is the IC signal or the ignition control. Now because this is a four wire GM coil, it has a digital uh, five volt signal that comes from the PCM to tell the coil uh, when to charge in order to fire the spark plug. And we're going to use that as a, uh, we'll call it a TDC reference. It'll be fairly close to the top dead center uh, as far as when we're looking at the patterns. This is the one pattern that we can use kind of as a sink, so to speak. As far as our other two channels go, we're connected into our exhaust cam sensor, as you can see right here, this being the exhaust cam and then our intake cam sensor in the back. And it's a little more difficult to see because it's actually down on the side of the valve cover instead of coming into the top like you see on the exhaust side. But that's our four channels. And all we've done is found a signal wire for all these sensors. Now, being as they're all digital sensors, they're all three wire sensors. So you're gonna have five volts, you're gonna have a low reference or ground, and then you will have your signal. I'll be honest, there are times when I look at sensors and maybe I don't have time to go get the wiring diagram. I just want to get a quick capture. Uh, I will just literally probe each wire and look for the signal. I'm either going to get a steady voltage, hardly any voltage, or I'm going to get a digital signal. And that's the one I want, the one with the digital signal. So let me go over here to the scope. And we've got our Pico on. And I just need to turn on some channels. So I'm gonna go to channel A. And we said channel A is gonna be our crank sensor. And what you can do, just to be safe, because you never know if it's a 12 volt signal or five volt signal, just put it on 20 volts. And <clears throat> first you gotta turn the scope on. And you can see right here, this is my zero volt line. And we're just above four volts there. So obviously it's not a 12 volt signal, it's some, something closer to five volts as we can see here in our pattern. So let's drop our voltage down to a 10 volt scale, makes it a little easier to see. Possibly could go down to a five volt scale, but 
if there's any noise in the pattern, which there is a little bit, we'll actually start to see it uh, over range a little. So let's see if we can clean that up just a little bit. Um, maybe that's better. Just change our filtering a little bit there. But it's still wanting over range because we're right on the five volt uh, scale right there. So let's drop this back to 10 just to keep the alert off. So that's our crank pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop it right there. And I wanna zoom in on it. And what we're looking at is basically, let me kinda of move this, my zoom bar. And I wanna see if I can capture a complete 720 here. So what we have is, it's kind of a typical GM. They will have a 60 tooth or a 60 count uh, reluctor on the crankshaft. So, and you, you don't want to, <laughs> if you want to count them, that's fine. But if you count it, you'll find out there's only 58 between this notch and this notch. This is the indicator that tells it when to start counting again. This is the missing teeth, so to speak. So what it is is actually 60 teeth on a 58 count. What they've done is taken two of them out and just combined into one pulse, as you see right here. So that would have been two pulses in there. And if you were to count across there, you'd find out there is exactly 58 from this point to this point. This represents 360 degrees of crankshaft rotation. This represents another 360 degrees. So from this point, the missing teeth to this point, you are looking now at 720 degrees of crankshaft rotation, which is one complete cycle. So let's go ahead and set up our next channel. So let me go ahead and make this run. So we got our pattern. And now we're gonna turn on channel B. And as you can see, channel B is our red channel, and it's going into cylinder number one's ignition coil. And I know that's a five volt signal, so let's just set this at 10. Nice clean pattern there. And we can see it moving across the screen every now and again over a range. And I'll tell you what, let's move this up to 20 just so it'll make it a little smaller on the screen. And that allows me to, to see it better in reference. Now, one of the things we can do, we notice that it just keeps scrolling across the screen. So let me go ahead and pull that pattern up just a little bit so it's easier to see it. And let me stop it right here. What we have is from zero volts, actually let's see if we can get that on to zero, there we go, to right here, this is when the computer is telling that coil to saturate. So it's basically turning the power on, okay, and holding it, allowing the coil to build that magnetic field, and then the computer shuts it off. When it shuts it off, it causes that inductive kick, which then fires the spark plug. So this is our reference to cylinder number one here as far as its firing event. If we had a known, uh, good pattern, which this one is, we can actually make some comparisons and say, okay, number one uh, fires at so many teeth or so many degrees past this notch right here on our crank pattern. Uh, I don't know where you'd actually use that a whole lot. I mean, if you had a situation where you thought the reluctor was slipped, uh, might help you uh, to compare these patterns. But for the most purposes, this really isn't an issue. So what I want to do now is a couple things. Let's go ahead and start capturing again. You notice it's going across the screen, so I'm going to set a trigger, and I'm going to set it for channel B. See down here at the bottom. And that's my little diamond right there. So now we're capturing a, a complete 180 on our pattern here. And what I want to do now is turn on the next channel. This would be our green channel. And uh, that's going to be our cam signal for the exhaust cam. So let me go ahead and uh, 
Let's put that one at 10 volts also, even though it's a five volt signal. And I now have the ability to move that up and make some comparisons. And let's see if we can filter that just a little bit so it's not near as uh, hashy. That looks a little better. And I'm going to go ahead and stop it. We're going to look at our pattern again. Now we know we have some reference points that we can use. Notice my ignition signal, the falling side of that signal lines up very close with that edge of the cam sensor signal right there on the exhaust cam. Okay. I'm not too concerned about you know what cylinders these are as far as the pattern. What I'd want to know is that if this is a known good pattern, I could use this information now to see if I had timing chain issues with this motor, like maybe a stretch chain or a chain that's jump time, something along that lines, because I know that these should line up in this area as you see right here. You could also use this for uh, uh, validating VVT. So what I want to do now is go ahead and turn the scope, make it run again. And I'm going to add in my fourth channel. And my fourth channel is going to be my intake cam sensor. And that's going to come in in the gold. Let's go ahead and clean that pattern up a little bit too. A little resolution back in it there. Something that makes it easy to see. Get that out of the way. Now it does get a little busy when you start looking at these signals compared to each other. So let me go ahead and get some captures here and then we'll kind of stop and take a look at them. So right there is our 720 that we were talking about earlier. So we see the plug, number one spark plug fires, number one spark plug fires again. We can see the relationship between the exhaust cam and that IC signal for cylinder number one. We can also see the relationship between the exhaust cam signal and the intake cam signal. The intake cam being this yellowish gold color you see right here, the exhaust being the green. This is a known good pattern. This is why we talk about, uh, in our, a lot of our training, we talk about having captures of known good patterns. If there was an issue with the timing, as I said earlier, uh, cam timing being off, not ignition timing, but I'm talking cam timing, we might see this gap between these two as different what we see right now. As I said before, there's, this is a 2019, it's only got 23,000 miles on it. So we're working with a vehicle that really doesn't have uh, many miles and obviously doesn't have any problems with it. We could also use this to bring it down, lay it on top of our crankshaft pattern. Let me just lay it right there on top of it. Notice now this signal, the first of the small ones right after a wide, actually lines up pretty close to this edge right here. Another good reference point I could use if I'm looking for a, 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 a timing issue, stretch chain or even a jump chain on a, a vehicle as we talked about earlier. Right. My hope was with this tech tip that I kind of uh, you know, pulled the cloud back or the covers back, so to speak, so you can see how we get these patterns. You can see how simple it really is. Uh, as we talked about earlier, the difficulty is just finding the sensors. But uh, my goal with this tech tip was just to show you where the connections that we made and kind of how we got the patterns and what they should look like. I'm Mark Henning with Garage Gurus. For more tech tips like this, check out our YouTube channel. And for more information on Garage Gurus, go to our garagegurus.tech website. Thanks.